everyone, Lou here. You know, after exploring a lot of anime games on Lost Media in one of my videos, which if you're just tuning in, I recommend checking out because it was a fun video to work on, I thought it'd be fun to sit here and explore some anime-based Flash games. Now, I should mention that I'm using a combination of the Wayback Machine and the plug-in Ruffle to play these Flash games. For a better explanation, I recommend the channel Lee Speaks just because her videos were a huge inspiration for this one. Second is that I am including anime-inspired Flash games too, since a lot of Flash games were translated or don't even have words. It can be sometimes hard to find the origin of that game. It's also because there's a popular brand of Flash games I want to explore that isn't from Japan, but still crazy fun nonetheless. All right, let's get started. Romance Academy Heartbeat of Love or School Flirting Game. This is a game you've all probably seen during the Yandere Simulator craze of the mid 2010s, as it was basically one of those games people would suggest to people who don't want to wait 30 years for a Yandere dev to add Ayano's Left Posable Toe DLC. That, and I think Yandere Dev might have mentioned on his inspiration list this game, but I think I may be wrong on that. Regardless, this did end up pretty popular for a while, and a few JRPG YouTubers like Manly Badass Hero played this one. Created by the now-defunct dev group Shockwave somewhere around 2007 or 2008, this is a really high-quality and really fun Flash game. You play as a girl basically laser zapping every boy in her vicinity to become the ultimate reverse harem queen on a speed run. To play the game, you move the mouse left or right and then click on a boy by holding down the mouse to zap him with love and girl boss energy, I guess, to make him all yours. There will be other girls trying to gain that boy's affection, which will drain your health, and you'll have to engage in a click war. The other goal is that if you want to get the best ending screen possible is to get the popular boy of the school, which will be covered in sparkles and you'll often see multiple girls fighting for. This game is pretty fun though with really adorable visuals and is all about how high of a score you can get in a short amount of time. So it's one of those games I highly recommend to people who want to play something fast paced without much strategy to it. Oh, and if you don't like the school setting, there's multiple different skin overlays for this version as well. There's a school festival one that goes by a now offensive title online and a beach one that's pretty silly too. Overall, I highly recommend playing this one as it even has an official English translation on some sites. Ofichurabu or Office Kissing Game. Okay, so apparently this game started basically an Elsa Gate situation on sites like Girls Go Games, Starsu.net, and many other female oriented flash game websites during the 2010s. What I mean by this is that literally everyone and their mother made a kissing game based off of this and made them either way too risque to the point where you're surprised they still have clothes on or slapped every heartthrob celebrity like this at the time like Justin Bieber. This one, unlike all the others, is really adorable to me. You play as an office worker who has a thing for his co-worker, except you don't want your boss finding out because office romance isn't very ethical in the workplace. The goal is to smooch your girly pop as much as humanly possible until the timer runs out. However, this game is pretty damn hard in my opinion. I'm not typically very good at these types of games and the game gives you a lot of false alarms when the boss is going to put down his phone. It is fun though and the smooch animation is just so cute to me. Like this is honestly so wholesome. You need about 1400 points to have a happy ending where you go home with the girl though. Otherwise it's a bad end where I guess 12 hours of smooching just wasn't enough for her. Hell there's even some endings where she goes home with the boss. As you can see from my footage though, I am not very good at this game and I couldn't even make it to the end of the day in these recordings. I think I did once off camera when I first played this but other than that, I haven't been able to make it to even the end of the day. Overall, if you love to do something while the person is distracted games, I highly recommend this one. It can be really addicting to play this one and see if you can make it to the end of the day. Rinmaru Games Thanks to the preservation of the dress-up community, these games are thankfully mostly saved from being lost forever, but I do find a few of these are still lost or don't function properly, unfortunately. Created by the Rinmaru Games duo somewhere around 2014, let me tell you these guys had a fucking chokehold on the anime RP community on Tumblr. 
Rinmar games to me were some of the best dress up games to exist and honestly helped birth the concepts of a lot of OCs for me. I mean, as you guys can see, I'm not the best artist in the world, so using a dress up game like this is really helpful to me. The artwork for Rinmaru was perfect, and although options were always limited for hair and clothes when you pit it against newer dress up competitions like Pit Crew, you can't lie that this is a wonderful website and I had some really cute OCs thanks to these. Hell, I even made ship art thanks to this site and even made my own avatar at some point on Rimaru. Of course, it is really simple, so it isn't like there's obviously a challenge to a dress-up game, but it's still really fun and definitely has had me spend quite a few hours of my late teens on this website. Like, actually, maybe as much time as people spent on other Flash game websites. Like I said though, some of these are lost or don't function as well if you use the Wayback Machine, but I still always recommend using Grinmaru for OC concept creations or just piecing together things or get a general idea. Hell, they even make for great profile pictures on Twitter. Just don't use this artwork for like actual money though because I do think it's scummy to monetize someone else's free work. Like, what I mean is don't use this as merch advertising for any YouTube channels or whatnot just because I don't think they approved of this in their guidelines. Overall, I just can't help but recommend dress up games enough just because I'm one of those girls who just loves sitting there and dressing something up for a long time. Probably why I like The Sims 4 so much, just because fashion is fun, damn it. And now to the grand finale of this video Avatar Star Sue from iBravo or the Sue games. Now, I don't know about Sue until I saw Lee Speaks video on it, but when I played these Flash games, Oh my gosh, these Flash games are so addicting, which is super weird because normally a lot of these Flash games you just play once and then you move on with your life. But with Sue, now nah, you're playing it until you reach the end, damn it. The thing that makes Sue games so difficult is the lengthy instructions required for a lot of these games that have like zero translations and even with translations, a lot of these are a lot of steps for a kid to follow on what's normally under a minute with three strikes. Now apparently these games used to be easier when they first appeared in the mid 2000s due to internet speed and processing being kind of slow back in the day but obviously due to internet speed and processing being pretty fast in 2023 safe to say that time made these games a lot more difficult than they're supposed to be. I'm not gonna go over every Sue game just because some of them are broken from my personal experience like Sue's wardrobe or they're pretty basic like dress up games that need no instruction. Now Sue does have a bit of lore though. Sue is a 10 year old girl who has a boyfriend named Bean and by day she's a cutesy 10 year old girl who loves sweets and some days she turns into a pop star also named Sue with the help of a magic wand that makes everyone forget she's also a little girl. It's like a weird and confusing version of Mimki Momo, I guess. Also, why is a 10 year old dating? I don't know, I think that's weird and a little too young to focus on romance. Even weirder is that these games are made to advertise a candy company in Japan who makes sweets and treats similar to the brand Meiji in Japan. In fact, to this day you can buy strawberry and chocolate candies similar to the mushroom chocolates from Meiji that have Sue paper dolls on it, so that's really neat. Still though, funnily enough and really weird to me is that a lot of these have fuck all to do with sweets like dress up, knitting, dating, etc. Either that or they're so difficult that you have to wonder who the fuck this was made for because there's no way in hell this was designed for a child to complete. Hell, most adults don't even finish some of these. The ones I personally think are the best are... Sue's Wonton Maker. This one is so fun but so challenging. As you can see from my footage in the video, I am not very good at this, but it's so fun. You make gyoza and put it into bowls or plates. The harder the level, the more quickly you have to make them and the more you have to put into the bowls or plates. I could only make it to level 3 before time ran out. Still, super fun though. I love cooking games personally, so I love this one. Sue's Garden. 
I used to love the Strawberry Shortcake games both on the Game Boy Advance as well as the original website back in the day, so I knew I'd like this one, and I do! I just don't know what inhuman level speed they expect you to have when killing the insects, but making the garden is fun! I just don't know what the hell I'm supposed to do to make Sue happy at the end. I think I'm supposed to plant all the plants before 30 days, but geez. With the level of speed at which you need to kill those bugs when they pop up, I don't know what they were expecting children to even do with that. Sue's potato farming. The time limit on this one is so ridiculous because I swear you just barely managed to reach the minimum, but it's still really fun. A lot of these rely on basically muscle memory at this point, but I think that's what basically makes a really complicated memory game actually kind of fun. There is a tomato version of this one that's much easier, but the potato one is interesting just because you can switch from a sweet potato version to a regular one. And I gotta say, I'm kind of curious to try what's basically a sweet potato version of Jagariko since those are pretty tasty. Sue's Meal Delivery Okay, this one, I quite literally have to have the instructions off screen to play this one, but it's so much fun. You basically put the correct topping and side with each ramen or side dish, but you're only given three strikes and then you fail, or you fail if you don't have a score of 30 by the time the timer runs out. Luckily for this one, the steps aren't super time consuming, so as long as you have the instructions for each dish on screen somewhere, it's actually pretty easy to reach a score of 30 for this one before time runs out. Sue's Ramen Game Last one and a personal favorite. This game is so unnecessarily difficult and it's almost kind of hilarious. Like, this game just has so many teeny tiny little steps and it's so easy to mess up that I've only seen the victory screen once as I've been playing this and that's because I copied an exact strategy guide from someone else's YouTube video. Like, as soon as you put the water in, you have literal milliseconds to put that shit on a plate because it burns so fast. Hell, real ramen doesn't even burn that fast. What the hell? Overall, the Sioux games are actually really fun. Like I said, I didn't show all of them in this video because some of them do require a little more digging on other girly game websites using the Wayback Machine, but there are some pretty challenging ones. Hell, most of these are difficult today. Like, for something made by a candy company, they sure wanted to challenge these kids to get so pissed off, they just want to buy some candy, I guess. With these two games, though, that'll be it for this video. I hope you guys had fun watching me review these games. I haven't properly played Flash games since I was a teenager, so it was really fun and nostalgic to go back to the crunchy audio and addictive nature. Hell, I went back and played some other nostalgic Flash games to me from my childhood, mainly American Girl Flash games they had on their website, which, by the way, if you guys want to review for those, let me know down below, because exploring these quicker Flash games is a lot of fun, and a good break from what I've been basically doing of writing video essays. Are there any Flash games you loved as a kid in this video? Are there any you still want to play or play today? As always, let me know down below. Hey guys, thanks for watching! If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're new! If any of you would like to help support my channel in any possible way, my Ko-fi page is down below in the description along with all of my social media. For any subscribers, new or old, who'd like to help with video ideas or maybe just want to talk about anime or something, I have a fan server linked down below. See you next time!